Hello all, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we shall discuss on the Diagnostic Communication Manager that is a DCM module of the Autosar uh, service layer. So as we already discussed, the DCM module is mainly responsible for handling the uh, diagnostic communication, diagnostic request and the response handling. So the in, the, in our previous video, we also discussed the, the complete uh, the diagnostic request message flow and the response message flow. So it goes this way, say for example, if we uh, take the underlying process protocol as uh, can then uh, whenever there is a uh diagnostic request from the canoe like uh, from the tester uh, for that matter so it comes to the can driver to the can interface then to the can tp pdur dcm then uh, it is uh, like uh, routed to either dem or uh, maybe uh, via rt to the uh, application component and uh, as a response uh, it goes uh, similarly the other way like from the uh, like dem or from the application component it uh, comes to the dcm then to the the PDR then it flows to the can TP and uh, like uh, yeah if ever it is more than eight bytes uh, only then can TP is involved here like for uh, a multi-frame communication otherwise it will be directly to the can interface to the can driver so can DCM model plays a major uh, major uh, ro role here so let's discuss uh, exclusively on this uh, DCM module so the DCM module is divided into uh, three layers mainly DSL DSD and DSP so uh, diagnostic session layer diagnostic service dispatcher diagnostic service uh, processor so uh, as i already uh, mentioned diagnostic request handling is performed by this dcm module it validates the incoming request and processes it like uh, uh, if it is a valid request then it sends a positive response uh, if it is a invalid request then it sends a negative response and DCM module also takes care of the security level and the session access and uh, it checks the service uh, is supported or not and also it validates the length format uh, these things yeah these are the major functionalities of DCM module then let's discuss each layer uh, layer one by one so uh, when it comes to the first layer that is a diagnostic uh, session layer so it uh, it receives the uh, diagnostic message request from the pdr and forwards is to uh, forwards it to dsd and also uh, it uh, gets back the response from the dsd and forwards it to pdr and here the major functionalities are like uh, it implements the concurrent tester uh, present logic here uh, yeah in the DS, uh, DSL layer the tester present logic is uh, implemented uh, like uh, say for example if you if you are if the ECU is in non default session and uh, if the server timeout happens then uh, it uh, the the issue will come back to the default session and if you do not want it to happen then we need to uh, keep sending the tester present and uh, this tester present logic is uh, completely handled here like uh, uh, say for example uh, we uh, moved from a default session to an extended session then uh, there is something called a, a session timer like uh, s3 timer gets started and uh, uh, if uh, the, the, if there are no more tester activity or if the, if the tester does not send any other request uh, like uh, uh, by the time this s3 timer uh, time uh, timeout happens s3 timer timeout happens then uh, the ECU will go back from uh, like uh, it will go back to the uh, default session from the extended session so I mean to say uh, say for example we moved from a default to extended session then the s3 timer gets started and uh, we need to keep on sending the uh, tester present or any any request we need to uh, make sure that there is a tester activity tester uh, activity Otherwise, the timer gets uh, elapsed. Timer gets elapsed, and uh, the issue will go back to the uh, the default session. So this tester present logic is implemented here in the DSL layer, and also it keeps uh, track of the current session. One more thing, and also it handles the different diagnostic protocols. That is both OBD onboard diagnostics as well as uh, unified diagnostic service UDS. And uh, DSL is responsible for uh, NRC 78. Yeah, NRC 78 pending is from here. Like say, for example, if the DCM is busy in processing, then this, uh, uh, so you know, uh, uh, this NRC 78 will be sent if the tester uh, requests something. Then uh, also the P2 and P2 star uh, uh, timer is also implemented here. So this, uh, when it comes to this uh, P2 and uh, P2 star. Uh, yeah timer like uh, yeah say uh, you send a request and uh, the 
ECU has to respond. ECU has to respond in a specific minimum time interval. That is called minimum server timeout. That is uh, P2. Uh, if the ECU fails to respond, if the ECU fails to respond within that time interval, then the NRC78 will be sent from the DSL layer, okay, to the tester. Then by that time again uh, the maximum server timeout that is P2 star gets activated then uh, the ECU uh, gets an extended time that it can respond within that extended time interval that is a P2 star. So if the ECU does not respond within that P2 star also then the NRC 10 that is general reject will be sent. So this is regarding the uh, P2 and P2 star that is maximum server timeout and minimum server timeout and uh, S3 timer we already discussed yeah. So these are the major functionalities when it comes to diagnostic session layer. So let's go to diagnostic service uh, dispatcher. So it receives the diagnostic message request from the DSL and forwards it to DSP and also gets back the response uh, from the DSP and forwards it to DSL. So the main things that uh, is uh, taken care here is the it checks the security and session access of the incoming request. Uh, say for example, uh, like a uh, few of the functionalities are uh, security locked. We need to unlock the security and only then those functionalities will be available for us. Uh, one is that and uh, and one more is the session access. Like say for example, uh, mm, a few of the functionalities have to be implemented in uh, extended session maybe. Then if you try to uh, execute those uh, services in the uh, default session then you get the nrc 7f that is service not uh, supported in the active session yeah service not supported in the active session that is nrc 7f and also it sends a positive response negative response or suppress the response and also checks whether the service is supported or not say for example if you try to uh, you know request a service which is not supported then you get the uh, nrc 11 that is a uh, service not supported yeah so as i already mentioned dsd model collects a positive and negative response from the dsp model and adds the diagnostic service identifier and the response data returned by the application and forwards the diagnostic response message to the dsl sub module yeah so the this was regarding the functionalities of dst so now coming to the functionalities of dsp diagnostic service uh, processing uh, processor uh, here uh, it receives the uh, diagnostic uh, message request from DST and forwards it to either uh, DEM or uh, the application uh, component and uh, gets back the response from them and forwards it to DSD. So uh, other major functionalities is like it uh, once the message is received from the DSD module, once the message, uh, uh, the diagnostic message is received from the DSD module, it checks for the message format. If there is incorrect message length or format, then it sends the NRC 13 that is incorrect message length or invalid format and also it checks whether the service is support uh, sorry sub function is supported or not here the sub function is supported or not is checked here if the sub function is not supported then as usual nrc 12 would be sent that is a function not supported then uh, it takes care of the service implementation uh, as well yeah so this was regarding the functionalities of the dsp module so we have covered all the three layers of dcm so also, it is important uh, to know that the PDU flow or the PDU uh, structure or the format or the data is different in different uh, module in each layer. So, uh, in the DCM module, it is uh, what we call the DCM buffer or uh, IPDU uh, uh, itself. Yeah, it's a complete uh, service message. So, uh, and when it uh, moves to the PDU, PDUR layer, it is uh, again IPDU itself because in the PDUR, we do not make any changes. We just root the IPDU and uh, we do not uh, modify anything so it we just uh, route it like uh, the from source to the destination uh, so like from uh, from DCM to CANIF or from DCM to uh, CAN TP we just uh, forward it so whenever this uh, PDUR goes to say for example CAN TP then uh, sorry from PDUR when, it, when the IPDU is forwarded to CAN TP uh, then uh, we call it as NPDU in the CAN TP we call it as NPDU so can TP handles as we know uh, the segmentation and uh, segmentation of huge chunks of data according to the data length of the underlying protocol. So this IPDU when it comes to CAN TP we call it as NSDU and uh, the CAN TP module uh, adds the PCI there. So the NPCI plus NSDU is, is totally called as NPDU and uh, can tp again when it forwards the this uh, npdu to the can interface layer it is called as lsdu and to that lsdu the pci uh, is added and totally we call it as L, uh, lpdu the total content of this lpdu is the can id 
can identifier and the DLC and the actual data that is LSDU or uh, what we can call the NPDU so this is how the PDU uh, uh, you know flow uh, flow in each uh, layer and um, yeah this LPDU is added uh, as data to the can frame and it will be forwarded uh, via bus to the tester so this is the complete uh, flow so this was all regarding the uh, uh, no, uh, different layers of DCM module and their functionalities and also the PDU flow in uh, different layers. So thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.